Hello Mbibers, welcome to today's session. So today children we are going to discuss about that what is the necessity of classification. Why the classification was necessary, why the two kingdom, three kingdom, four kingdom, five kingdom classification and even the six kingdom classification came into existence and why it was necessary and what was the basis of the classification. Okay, so before we start, let me introduce you to myself. I am Anam Khan, I will be your botany expert and we are going to discuss all the amazing and interesting topics related to the botany. Okay, so let us start our today's session. So children, in the biological classification, we are going to basically cover the topics would be the only related to the classification. In today's topic, I am going to only discuss about what kind of a classification are there into existence, what two kingdom means, what three kingdom classification was classified, why three, four, five, all of them will be discussing in detail. Okay, so today we are going to cover only the kingdoms of classification or types of classification in the existence. Okay, moving forward children, before let me introduce also to the biological classification which is the kingdoms system of classification, the two kingdom system of classification, the five kingdom system of classification and advantages of the phylogenetic system. Okay, all those, all these things will be covered in today's lecture. So, without wasting any time, let us continue our today's lecture talking about that what is the classification? Why? What exactly you mean when you say the term classification? So, towel with footwear, it is not a classification, there is always a proper place to place your footwear and to place your towel, they cannot be placed together. It is not feasible. It is not a well classification manner, okay, to put towels and shoes all together. Yes, toothbrush with the kitchen, spatulas, no, because the toothbrush belong to the bathrooms, of course, the washrooms and your kitchen spatula needed to be where in the kitchen drawer. They cannot be mixed together because this does not feel that this is the right form of classification. Okay, next, organized wardrobe. Yes, okay, the shirts are in the one place, the jeans are in the one place, the coats and the blazer are at where one place, the t shirts are in one place, the socks are at one place. A very organized wardrobe. Yes, of course, that is the basic of classification that you basically classify all the similar things at one place and other similar things at one place, not that you are creating a whole kind of a mixture of everything. I know most of you have this kind of a wardrobe only. Okay, and the organized kitchen, of course, we always wanted to have a organized kitchen. The plates, serving plates are at one, the serving spoons are one, the forks are at one place, the knives are at one place, the bowls, serving bowls are at one place. So, this is what a general classification we are using, we are seeing, we are actually doing it in our daily life. But exactly similar classification is also necessary when it comes to our organism, be it plant or the animals. Okay, they needed to be classified in certain uh, way, in a certain proper manner, so that when we try to study about any particular organism, we generalize them. Okay, these are the characteristic basis on which they are being classified. Okay, moving forward, children. Next, we have what is biological classification. So, children, it is nothing, just a scientific procedure. Because since this is just nothing but a scientific procedure of arranging organisms into a hierarchical series. Hierarchical series means hierarchy, maintaining a basically who comes first, after that who basically comes more modified form, more modified form, more modified form. Okay, we keeping the less modified form or the basics at the lower and we keep the most advanced organisms at the higher level, maintaining the hierarchy from low to high. Okay, you know children hierarchy cannot be maintained from high to low because this is not nature. Nature always have shown the evolution process. 
नेचर हैज ऑलवेज गॉट बेटर विद दी टाइम ओनली ओके द प्रिमेटिव स्टफ एंड द एडवांस स्टफ यू नो द प्रिमेटिव स्टफ हैव ऑलरेडी गॉट एन इनटू एक्सटेंशन बट द एडवांस स्टफ इज ऑलवेज इन द टॉक ऑफ द टाउन इन द लाइम लाइट ऑलवेज ओके वी ऑलवेज टॉक अबाउट द एडवांस थिंग्स बी इट इन आर डेली लाइफ और बी इट इन द क्लासिफिकेशन so this biological classification is totally based on the similarities and dissimilarities of course what are the similarities why you are keeping all the folks at one place why you are keeping all your shirts at one place because the similarities make them validate to put them all at one place and dissimilarity with the other stuff also make them to put that at one place. place so it is not possible the classification is always on the basis of similarities and dissimilarities let's see what is the importance of classification talking about the importance of classification let's see we have word is the importance of classifying things it's to organize it's to identify it's to easily communicate with others this is the reason we try to classify things because we wanted it to organize in a certain way we wanted them to identify easily okay and we wanted to easily communicate with others yes i'll be more comfortable to communicate with the other human right okay yes or no yes i know every particular diff every organisms has their own language to communicate that is why they are similar so to organize in a such a way that it is easily identified and they can easily communicate with each other this is the necessity of the biological classification or in general we can say about the classification yes the reason of classification is to organize to identify to easily communicate with each other this is just an basic introduction okay let's see what we have exactly when we talk about the classification so children the very first classification which came into existence was the aristotle classification talking about the aristotle classification it is an earliest attempt to scientific basis for the classification it is the very earliest attempt of the classification classified plants into three based on their morphological characteristics what he did since aristotle was the first one to make an attempt to classify only so just what he did was the very first thing he wanted to classify on the basis of their external appearance on the basis of their morphology morphology means physical features which you can see the external appearance so what he did he took all the plants and animals and classified on the basis of their morphological features okay so he basically classified three on the basis of morphological characteristics classified plants into three parts one is the trees of course trees mango tree banana tree coconut tree okay next is the shrubs which is the hibiscus which are the small smaller plants and from there the other is the herbs which are extremely smaller plants which is the mint plants very easy the taller one then the shorter one then again the shorter one so the basic of the aristotle classification is totally on the basis of their external features on the morphology so morphology they have divided the plants into trees herbs shrubs okay easy simple and it was done by the very first attempt because of the very first attempt by the aristotle and he also classified animals on the basis of the red blood cells and without the red blood cells means the animals which are containing the red blood cells or rbcs and animals which are not having red blood cells simply they have classified into two okay so aristotle made an attempt to classify animals and plants on the basis of these two features okay as you can see also this is the mango tree mango fruit there is hibiscus flowers and there's a mint so longer shorter and or shorter then tiger animal with the red blood cells and there is an octopus without the red blood so simple classification by aristotle simple classification trees 
shrubs, herbs with red blood cells, without red blood cells. Okay, this is the only thing he can do at such initial days of the classification. So, of course, the many if anyone does the classification, it gathers the attention of all other people and they try to improve it only. Okay, nobody is going to basically. Uh, anyone who does the classification will try to go for the improvement or improved or modified or advanced form of classification eventually. So, different classification came into limelight after the Aristotle started with the process of classification. Moving forward, we have seen what Aristotle did with the classification. Next, we have next we have the two kingdom classification after the Aristotle. The another attempt was made by the Carlos Linnaeus. You know he is the father of taxonomy. So, of course, the next attempt was made by the Carlos Linnaeus and he classified on the basis of the nutrition and mobility. Nutrition and mobility, you are learning the word nutrition at a very in the 9th standard also in the 10th standard auto. Nutrition is autotropic, heterotropic, parasitic, saprophytic. These are all kinds of nutrition existing. And the other is the mobility, whether they can move, whether they can do the movement or I would say the locomotion or whether they can't do the locomotion. Always remember, plants show movement, but they do not show locomotion. There's are two different words have a two different meanings. Okay, so Carlos Linnaeus divided the two kingdom classification on the basis of the nutrition and the mobility. So basically simple, it was very simple for him to classify, he classified kingdom plantae in which all the plants are existing and kingdom animalia which consists of animals, very simple classification. Keep all the plants at one place, keep all the animals at one place and called it as two kingdom classification okay still better okay aristotle just said okay fine trees shrubs and herbs okay and simple red blood cells uh, uh, having a red blood cells or not having a red blood cells but he's literally classified okay on the basis of nutrition and on the basis of mobility there are plants which cannot show the locomotion which do not move they are not mobile and yet there are animals anything which moves will basically any which anything which is mobile okay is the animals okay simple classification two kingdom classification okay the very next thing of course now we are going to improve more yes the other classification came into the limelight which is a little most advanced from then the two kingdom classification but before that let us know what this two kingdom classification was rejected what was the drawback of this two kingdom classification everything has a drawback okay not everything is perfect every research is not perfect so the two kingdom classification has their own drawbacks and what was the drawbacks if i talk about the drawbacks children did not distinguish between the eukaryotes and the prokaryotes eukaryotes and prokaryotes you know you have gone through this the prokaryotes are very primitive primitive nucleus eukaryotes advanced nucleus i don't know i don't talk about i'm not going to talk about the eukaryotes and prokaryotes but you know about the eukaryotes and prokaryotes next unicellular and multicellular organisms unicellular single cell multicellular more than one cell okay a group of cells creating an organisms next photosynthetic and non photosynthetic okay there are certain uh, plants which do the photosynthesis some which do not do the photosynthesis the basis of classification was not considering these three things when the two kingdom classification came into existence was explained these three things were rejected or these three things were ignored and that is what becomes the drawback of the two kingdom classification neither they were talking about the prokaryotes nor they were talking about the eukaryotes nor the photosynthetic non photosynthetic or the unicellular or the multicellular okay so these were the drawbacks so next let's see what is the next after the drawbacks and the two kingdom classification here comes the 
फाइव किंगडम क्लासिफिकेशन जस्ट अ सेकेंड so there comes basically the five kingdom classification talking about the widely accepted classification system which was proposed by the rh whitaker in 1969 it was takely it was so widely accepted because everything everything was taken into the consideration okay talking about the five kingdom classification children it was based upon the mode of nutrition thallus organization cell structure phylogenetic relationship reproduction includes five kingdom which is the monera protista fungi plantae animalia all these five kingdoms were classified and that is why the reason of five kingdom classification being so widely accepted because everything was considered everything was basically considered the mode of nutrition the thallus organization the cell structure the phylogenetic relationship and of course the reproduction so considering all these factors the five kingdom classification came into existence which is the moneran protista fungi plantae animalia okay which was proposed by the whitaker still now we only talk about the five kingdom classification because it was so advanced so considerable everything was covered to learn about that why how classification is being done respectively let's see next what are the basis we going to study about the five kingdom classification next is talking about the characteristics in the five kingdom classification the characteristics plantae and animalia okay so children talking about the cell wall which is present in plants and absent in the animals cell wall is absent in the animals then comes the locomotion were present in the plants absent in the plants and present in the animals the other is the nutrition which is the autotrophic nutrition plants make their own food and the other is the heterotrophic nutrition because animals are totally dependent on the other animals for their food okay next the response to the stimulus the plants have a very poor response to the stimulus very slow very gradual not advanced not very reflex yes animals have a very well developed reflex system if you touch something hot you will immediately remove if something sharp is coming to your view you will move okay you have a well developed nervous system well developed reflex system next is the contractile vacuole which is absent in the plants and present in the animals bacteria fungi algae bryophyta pteridophyta gymnosperms and angiosperms come in the kingdom plantae while the protozoan vertebrates and invertebrates come in the animal kingdom so these are the basic few characteristics just to for just for your information that which particular characteristics are existing in which kingdom okay next we're going to talk about the five kingdom classification and each in each kingdom what was the feature which are unique make them unique and the reality to make them put into a particular kingdom or to basically create a five kingdom classification what are the unique characteristics of each kingdom let's study about it the very first is the kingdom monera the kingdom protista the kingdom fungi and kingdom plantae and kingdom animalia so children talking about the kingdom monera the special features it possess so the reason we keeping the keeping an individual system for the monerans is that they are prokaryotics okay having a primitive nucleus now just observe that when we reach from monera to animals how advanced feature will experience okay so children they are unicellular made up of single cells they are autotrophs slash heterotrophs yes some are autotrophs and some are heterotrophs both are existing in monerans since some have cell wall and some does not have a 
cell wall. So, these are the features are found in the kingdom Monera, they are prokaryotic, they are unicellular, they are autotrophs and there are heterotrophs. Some have cell wall, some does not have a cell wall. The next kingdom which came into existence was the kingdom protesta. Next again they are having eukaryon or eukaryotic organisms. They have unicellular body, they could be autotrophs create their own food and they could be heterotrophs dependent on the other organisms. The movement of the protesta is through the cilia, flagella and pseudopodia. These are the organs responsible for the movement in the protesta, cilia, flagella, pseudopodia. Talking about the kingdom fungi, children the kingdom fungi is always been very controversial. Initially it was kept in kingdom planty, then it was kingdom animalia. But eventually a Whittaker classification was so widely accepted that he individually gave the kingdom fungi a whole unique kingdom to the fungi. Reason because the fungi has a eukaryotic, eukaryotic organisms, these are eukaryotic organisms. They are mostly multicellular, they have the structure of a multicellular body. Next they are heterotrophs as well as they are saprophytes, they are totally dependent on the other organisms and yes they do feed on the dead and decaying animals and plants. Next the cell wall is made up of chitin, the cell wall is made up of chitin, the fungi this is very popular, the cell wall of the fungi is made up of chitin and some form of symbiotic relationship. Symbiotic means a mutual relationship in which the fungi gets an association and just like mycorrhiza, okay, the lichen, okay, they form an association with algae and fungi and they both live together because the fungi needs the nutrition, okay, both of them are having a give and take relationship, so also act as a symbionts, okay. The next, you know, the kingdom plantae which are eukaryotic, multicellular, autotrophs and have a cell wall made up of cellulose, okay. Next come the kingdom animalia which have eukaryotic organisms, multicellular level of organisms, heterotrophs, completely heterotrophs, they are not in the ability to create their own food, to make their own food and the cell wall is completely absent in the animal cells. So this is what the five kingdom classification is all about. These are the unique feature of each and every kingdom explained by the Whittaker in five kingdom classification and individually they were given the place in the whole classification, okay. I just hope this is clear. Moving forward, now we have already learned why Whittaker actually created the whole unique five kingdom of classification with the unique features individually given to each and every kingdom. Moving forward, let us see what we have. Next we have the earlier classification system before the Whittaker came into the limelight. Let us see what were the earlier classification system were doing. So the earlier classification system is that before the five kingdom, bacteria, blue green algae, fungi, mosses, fern and gymnosperm and angiosperm were included under plants. Simple kingdom plantae, kingdom animalia. So herbs, shrubs, angiosperm, gymnosperm, algae, fungi, mosses, fern, all of them has a single kingdom which is called the kingdom plantae, okay. And based on the presence of cell wall in the organisms, groups with widely dissimilar traits were put together. Okay, other eukaryote groups were mixed with the prokaryotes, bacteria, blue green algae, bacteria and blue green algae. So, what was the basis of earlier classification system? They were not creating a unique differentiation with the organisms. They are mixing prokaryotes with eukaryotes, they are mixing the eukaryotic group mixed with the prokaryotic group. It means the bacteria and the blue green algae were put together. And because they are and the widely dissimilar organisms were also put together. So of course it was very, uh, I would say it was most of a mixed up classification which was not properly classified. Every organism does not have a proper 
kingdom or proper unique features they need not to be put together okay so vitaker before vitaker so this kind of a classification system was in existence putting dissimilar characteristics together putting prokaryotes and eukaryotes together putting herbs shrubs ferns fungi mosses bryophytes pteridophytes all at one place so you know you must have imagine you can imagine because now you know that it is not possible only to learn all the unique features of a different different organisms in a one group okay so when we talk about the group we talk about the similarities similarities they share maximum similarities okay i'm not saying every group has a 100% similar to each other no they do might have the unique features one or two but the maximum similarity is been already attained to keep them under one group okay moving forward children the next earlier classification system has that it combined multicellular and unicellular also for instance the algae category included like chlamydomonas and spirogera the chitin makes up the walls of fungi where cellulose makes up the walls of green plants despite these differences in their cell walls it did not distinguish between the autotrophic green plants and the heterotrophic fungi so why this is the reason why fungi was given an individual place because can you see it was kept in plants but plants have a cell wall of cellulose plants are autotrophs majorly they are autotrophs but the fungi cell wall was made up of chitin and they are completely completely heterotrophs none of the fungi create their own food they are not it is not possible for fungi to create their own food and yet it was kept in kingdom fung uh, kingdom plantae so these are the reason because the fungi was kept in the kingdom plantae but still do not show certain similar characteristics to the plants that is why it was always controversial the where the fungi exactly actually belong to okay the next part comes into the limelight is that updated classification system so when we talk about the advanced classification system when we talk about the advanced feature of a classification system we talk about the vitaker classification system which was widely accepted that fungi was given a separate kingdom called kingdom fungi okay and kingdom monera comprised all the prokaryotic organisms kingdom monera protista fungi plantae animalia kingdom protista comprises unicellular eukaryotic organisms okay and chlamydomonas and chlorella with paramecium and amoeba are comes coming under the kingdom protista so children the reason this classification was so widely accepted because basis of the similarities and dissimilarities was so unique they they individually given the separate kingdoms to study so the reason the kingdom protista comprises only unicellular and eukaryotic organisms leads to chlamydomonas and chlorella with paramecium and amoeba comes under the kingdom protista so the updated classification uh, classification system has many unique feature and that is the only reason it was so so came into existence and so widely accepted because everything is been classified very clearly okay and properly so this is the updated classification system okay next we going to talk about the disadvantage see the reason of classification the research the discoveries everything has their own disadvantages everything has their own drawbacks talking about the drawbacks of also five kingdom classification is that it puts unicellular algae in the kingdom protista okay next multicellular algae in kingdom plantae so unicellular algae in the kingdom protista and multicellular algae in the kingdom plantae what is the differentiation yes it is a drawback why not to give a algae completely one place be it unicellular be it multicellular but yes five kingdom classification is putting the algae in the unicellular protista also and in the multicellular kingdom plantae many organisms with dissimilarities were in the kingdom protista viruses are entirely excluded yes 
viruses of course they were entirely excluded they are not part of any kingdom or any classification they are not completely ignored yet you know the viruses are very important you know about the viruses how the whole existence is possible of the virus only and the algae of course it's still a question okay and still the very dissimilar organism present in the kingdom protesta but still still i think the discovery are still going on there might be new advanced formation might come in the future okay so these are the few disadvantages or drawbacks of the five kingdom classification okay next i would say not widely accepted but yes there is an existing six kingdom classification also and it was come basically given by carlos woes he divided monera into archibacteria and eubacteria okay the monera into archibacteria which is the ancient bacteria ancient bacteria and the advanced bacteria which is the eubacteria so the six kingdom classification is also known okay that the he basically carl was he is basically divided the kingdom monera into archibacteria and eukarya at the same level so next also when we talk about there is a 16 ss rna the 16 sr rna genetic analysis studied gene the sequence for the classification and purpose so might be in the future that on the basis of the extern genetic makeup they might be a classification come into an existence that this 16 rrna with a genetic analysis has been done and studied gene sequence for the classification purpose so on the basis of their genetic makeup the classification can also be done in the future okay so children this is about the classification why it was necessary why the five kingdom classification is so widely accepted what was the drawbacks of five kingdom classification how in future the six kingdom classification also came into the limelight and yes the 16 srrna the genetic makeup might be the future of the taxonomy okay next going to talk about there is a question the two kingdom system was based on the nutrition and the mobility true or false true or false true or false the ku kingdom classification was based on the nutrition and the mobility it is a true yes it is absolutely true it was based on the two kingdom which was uh, given by carles linnaeus and it was based on the nutrition and the mobility okay okay i hope next we take our classified organisms on the basis of their cell structure and the mode of nutrition i don't know the answer we take our classified organisms based on their cell structure and mode of nutrition no it is absolutely false the correct answer is false the viteka does not classified on the basis of their cell structure and function he classified on the mode of nutrition thallus organization cell structure phylogenetic relationship and reproduction yes the viteker classification which is the five kingdom classification was widely accepted because of this these are the based these are the basis of the classification okay the next question is viteker five kingdom classification grouped all the prokaryotic organism under which group prokaryotic all the prokaryotes come under which group eukaryotes prokaryotes monera protista fungi animalia comes under which group so all the prokaryotic organisms come under the kingdom monera so kingdom monera is responsible for the having all the prokaryotic organisms under it okay next question the cell wall of fungi is made up of the cell wall of fungi is made up of you know that was a major 
reason why fungi was basically kept in a separate kingdom because the plant cell is made up of cellulose and the fungi cell wall is made up of chitin and yet fungi is a completely heterotrop next question is one of the advantages of whittaker five kingdom classification is that viruses were not included is it good or not yes or no what do you think is it right is correct or not advantages it was the advantage that the viruses was not included no it was not an advantage it was a disadvantage uh, disadvantage that viruses were completely completely ignored okay the two kingdom system of classification proposed by carlos linnaeus divided all living organisms into two kingdom and was better by taker five kingdom classification completely disagree yes it is not possible okay it was not okay to basically have a single two kingdom classification kingdom and uh, kingdom plantic kingdom animalia no whittaker classification was based on several characters several groups were made on the basis of similarities and dissimilarities so that is why whittaker classification is so widely accepted so children in which kingdom you think all the bacteria are being classified reason the question is all the bacteria are classified under which condition do, do you remember this is just for you this is question for you you need to find out in which kingdom was all the bacteria are being classified the sixth kingdom classification came into limelight by the carlos was he introduced eu bacteria and rk bacteria in which kingdom he added that that is the answer we'll discuss in the uh, sessions coming sessions also okay so children before you go let me introduce you to the same we have discussed all these things today we have discussed about the two kingdom classification we have discussed about what was the initial basis of classification what is the advanced form of classification and how it was important to important to have a classification system all that we have studied from very basic to the advanced level so only reason of this session was to basically tell you that why there was a necessity of the classification why it was necessary why the previous classification was not widely accepted why this advanced classification system is widely accepted and we have all the sequence classes all the biological biological classification plant kingdom on the mbib app so you need to join us on the mbib app to have a regular sequence live sessions on the mbi product app so you need to download that and just assign yourself just basically register yourself for the sessions or the respective sessions related to biological classification there we have detailed discussions about the kingdom monera kingdom protista fungi animalia and kingdom plantae okay this was just to give you a brief introduction about the classification but we have a detailed class on our mbi app so children join us on the mbi bab this is the mbi bab if you see this is how it looks like so children you can select your class just click on this button which is coming on the left hand side and as you see you can select your board also from whichever board you belong to you can select if you coming from cbsc icsc or any other state board you can select that the respective content the respective videos the respective questions would be co totally created according to their respective boards next you have to select your examination which particular class you belong to 9 10th or 11th i am selecting 11th standard because this is an 11th topic and if i press i am going to select the respective language i am comfortable with and as i press done i will land on this page of the mbi app and as you can see there's a proper all the subjects are present physics chemistry mathematics and biology might have videos and everything and as i click on the home button i will basically land on the home page and as i click on the mbib live classes i can see the mbib live classes for the next 7 days and all the past mbib classes which is already been taken so this is me taking your classes on the mbib app okay there we have just started the biological classification we'll discuss in detail every kingdom every particular monera protista fungi animalia 
everything will be basically discussed over there so please join us on the mbibe app you can learn yourself you can practice also you can test also you can love your several videos and content according curated according to your this is also this is 24/7 doubt which is a personalized recommended whatsapp and as you click i am interested so basically it will lead to your whatsapp chat which is the mbibe doubt you can always ask your doubts and just put your message over there and somebody would reply to your doubts you can also click on the remind me later so this is about the mbibe app next children we have this amazing app which is the mbibe lens app just go and download it on your phone from the app store or play store you just don't have to see do nothing just to have scan the text on your textbook it will highlight all the keywords and will show you all the respective 3d structures related to it so if you want to explore the 3d world this is the app for you and the last you can also join us on the telegram channel so that you never miss an update regarding the classes regarding all the examinations okay so i hope we'll meet again tomorrow so till then please join us on the mbibe app children there's a seek already sessions lined up for you for the biological classification plant kingdom etc till then take care keep mbibing bye bye keep mbibing we believe in you